So I just found out uh, that um, next Tuesday, they are going to be taking baby S to another foster home. Um, and um, we do have one hearing left before then. There were there have been a lot of documents, letters on my that I've written and letters and documents and reports from other multiple departments that are <laughs> advising against moving him. And um, there's like a sh a little shred of hope that this judge will see what everyone's saying, the people that are with him every single day, and how not good of an idea this is. Um, but I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. Anyway, I'm trying to be strong because regardless, I gotta be strong for him. But it's still really difficult. I decided that I needed to go on a walk because, so I've got, baby boy here but I decided I need to go on a walk because I just he's getting sleepy I just needed to like I I could sit in that house and cry and sit in the house and, and wonder and rack my brains brain but I just was like you got to get this out this energy out um, so I'm just walking through my neighborhood Trying to stay positive, but it's hard because you just think to yourself, like, like I see two women with their kids up the street, and I think, like, what it must feel like to not fear someone coming to take your kid. And I will say that, like, if this was a true reunification and this was done properly and this was done in a way that wasn't going to traumatically affect him, then I'd be all for it. But that's not what's happening. And I just have... I have hope and trust in God that the miracle will take place and that this judge will step in and stop this transfer. He's too young. This family does not know him and he doesn't know them. You do not take a four-month-old baby away from the only parent they've known since they were seven weeks old and justify it because of a sibling, a half sibling. I just put um, <sighs> baby S to sleep and I just gave him like his bath and <clears throat> gave him his bottle. I um, played music for him and sang to him. <clears throat> and it's just like really sad because man, like, just can't wrap my mind around why people, very few people, yet very influential people, feel like 
this decision is a good idea. This is not reunification. This is merely a transfer of foster placement due to a half sibling. <laughs> And I, I can't get behind this because he's too young. He's been with me for three of his four months of life and he has never visited this family, this half brother and the foster family. That is not when you take a child this young. It is traumatic for them. <laughs> you take a child this young, I'm sorry, you take a child to a new placement after visitations have happened, after that child's been able to bond with that family. So this is where the system is failing, continuing to fail these children. So, it's just heartbreaking and and it's also heartbreaking for me because I have loved and cared for this child during some of the most impactful moments of his life. If this was true reunification and all the steps for him to go back with his parents, for him to, uh, he had, if, if he had had visitations visitation and I knew he was going to be emotionally and mentally safe then I don't think this would be as hard it would still be hard but I don't know that it would be as hard I am praying to God that this judge on Thursday comes through reads all the reports and sees what everyone is saying Everyone on Baby Us's case at DCFS supports him not leaving my care. Hopefully this judge is of sound mind and understands the trauma that it will put him through. And the future can be filled with visitations the future can be filled with him getting to know whomever he needs to get to know so that if he gets reunified or if he goes with another family, at least he knows the environment he's entering. Not when he's blind to it all. This is the reality of what foster parents go through. So today, I woke up feeling better than yesterday. I don't know why I have a lot of um, hope that things will go well. So I spoke with the clerk's office <clears throat> and the clerk said, you know, the judge is a really kind person. I wanted to verify that he's received all of my JV 290 documents which are basically documents, and I'll do another video on this, basically documents that allow you as a foster parent to uh, have a voice in, in the hearings, because you're not allowed to speak during the hearings. Um, you're solely there just to, because you're a caretaker and you're, you're allowed to be there. But if you want to say anything, you turn in this JV290, which is a document, and then you can also attach like a letter to that document. And that's what I do. I attach like a one to two page letter to the document. I also put photos of baby S and I so that the judge can see that this is a human being that he's ruling on, not just a case number um, and not even just a name, like he's a person. So basically I, they confirmed that they have received my letters and then I also know that the other person at DCFS is turning in a really three page long document that I was asked to write um, that really, really, really goes into depth about the realities of his case. But the point of this right now is just like, I feel 
good. I feel okay. I have a lot of hope that things are going to work out how everyone wants and they should work out. Um, so now it's time to eat. I need to eat. I've got a little bit of a headache and I do this when I get really stressed. I don't eat much and I try to figure everything out and have all the answers, but there's really nothing more I can do. I've done everything. So, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> here's what's going on. Um, it's like 5.30 p.m. and I have been asleep pretty much all day. Oddly enough, uh, baby S has been asleep as well. He's right here on the sofa next to me. He's up now, but he, he was asleep. We both were sleeping all day. I don't know energetically if he felt everything. I don't know what the deal was, but me, after I talked to people, my family and some stuff and some friends and people from church, I just kind of was like, I can't talk about this anymore right now. And I just felt kind of paralyzed, kind of like, man. So here's the situation. Baby S has a half sibling that I've known about since the night they dropped him off, since February 4th. And because the county wants to put siblings together at all cost. They um, have decided that they're going to move forward with transitioning him from my home to the home of the half brother. Again, I can't give a bunch of details, but what I can say is he's been in my home since February 4th of this year. And he, the hearing that we had today was a, called a, I believe it was called a disposition hearing. Um, or maybe that was the last last hearing was the disposition hearing, but this one was kind of an extension of that. Um, regardless, that, that hearing should have happened one month in. From my understanding, it was supposed to happen around one month in. Um, but because, you know, parents are, bio parents are, and there's some other factors to the case. Here you go, buddy. Um, it got pushed. It just, it just got pushed. And that's what took so long. That's what took over three months. Now, my argument to the judge, to the lawyers, the argument of everyone at DCFS was that he's been in my care for all of his life. For I got him when he was one month old and then he's now four months old. The caregiver that has the half brother, you know, he, let's just put it this way. He's never met them. He's never met this person. Um, so we are fearful that this is going to break him that this is going to cause him social anxiety, emotional dis uh, um, anxiety. This is gonna be a major break in attachment and bond for a four month old baby. And there are studies that have been done for years that we know that this causes depression in young adults. We know that this causes social anxiety in adulthood. We know that this causes adults to not be able to attach to people in relationships when they're older. We know these things. The courts are not dumb. They know these things. Yet, it's just being overlooked. Um, every time I, I argued this, every time I, I wrote in, every time I spoke to a lawyer, every time anything happened, I always said this, DCFS has said this, people, everyone, mad assessors said this, Everyone has explained these things and we all got met with, but the law says we have to put siblings together, so we're moving him. It came down to this. It came down to us saying, can we please, we're not saying leave baby S with Kevin. We're just saying, can we please have time to do visitations? It's, it's really crappy for him. It's crappy for me. It's crappy. And you know what? Like, this just makes me think like, what if, what if I had other children in my home and they attached to him and he attached to them like you're 
you are breaking these bonds because of a law. Because something written on paper somewhere, somewhere, that says siblings need to be together. I'm not saying siblings don't need to be together because they should be together. But this is not a one size fits all situation. This is human life we're talking about. So if a disposition meeting had not happened in the first month, because if this was at a month, I would say, yeah, he hasn't been with me that long, put him with the brother. This is, we're talking about months worth of attaching and bonding through some of the most impactful moments, months of this child's entire life. To rip him up like that. I, I had said to some friends, we don't even do this to goldfish. Like literally, if you have a goldfish and you're gonna give it a new tank, you let that tank sit for 48, um, for 24 to like 48 hours before, so the water can acclimate, before you move the, the, the goldfish into, into a new tank. But they think it's appropriate to move a four month old child into a home he has literally never met because a sibling's there. Rather than saying, as a judge, no, I'm going to stop this transfer and order that that other family do visitations and Kevin does visitations so the kids can know each other, so baby S can know where he's going. And it was met with, Mr. Gertis, we love that you're an advocate for this child and that you care so much. And we need more foster families like you. Let me help you out. <laughs> he's so funny. He's got like the blankets and like the blankets and the pacifier and he's like playing with him. Um, but he said, we need more foster parents like you. And this isn't the first time that I've heard that. But you can say that all you want, but if you don't make the change, you're never gonna get more foster parents like me. Because these are the reasons people stop doing this because they can't take the system. Talk to foster parents. Talk to the people that you're asking to stay up all night and cradle these kids to sleep and find out why they're not doing this. I cannot, I will not lie if I said over the last two weeks I considered never doing this again because it's just too much. But I will also say a big part of it is I want to be a, a parent. I want crying babies in my home. I want to do this. I want to eventually adopt. And then there's everyone that watches these videos. I wish I could show you some of the DMs that I get. Maybe I'll put them on the screen. You guys can see the comments that I get on these videos. They really help me. They really, let me pick this, pick this kid up. Oy. Look at that. Look at that hair growing in back there. They really, really help me. You know, I haven't cried today. I don't think I will. I don't know. I think I will next week when we move him. I know that this is what you walk into, right? Like this is what you do. Um, but I have to begin the process for myself to let him go. And I have to start, like prepare my own heart. I, I have to prepare my heart to bring in another child. And I want to, when I bring in another child, bond and attach to that child because that's what the child needs. I don't think I want to record the transfer and all that stuff. I don't know if, if I feel the need to record before and after, maybe I will and put out a separate video, but I, I, I don't know if I will. Just know that it's heartbreaking and um, I'm gonna miss this guy. And uh, I just hope to God that like he doesn't get lost in this system um, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go buy him a suitcase and put his stuff in it. I don't want him leaving here with his stuff in a trash bag. You hear these stories of kids leaving their foster placements in trash bags and no, not him. I'm gonna get him a little, little suitcase. I'll put his stuff in it. I'm gonna write a list of all the things that I know about him to help this next person know how to cradle him, know how to console him 
know how to like what you know his feedings and everything i have all of his medical documents in a huge folder let me show you guys one second literally this is a folder of all him literally all of this is him everything about his placements every doctor's appointment everything and i'm going to hand this over um to them so they have records so that when they're not next they're about a two hour drive away so when they go to the doctors or his new doctor they can have it and help him and um stuff like that <laughs> uh I just hope he's going to be fine. Um, I don't even know what else to say. I know that this is what fostering is about. Like, you know that you could one day not have that child in your life. You don't know if that child will ever become adoptable. And honestly, you start this process knowing that you're gonna go to reunification with that child, that that child, you're gonna help that child get back to their biological family. I know that, but it doesn't make the process any easier. You can justify that you knew this was gonna happen. You can justify that you gave him some of the best four months of his life so far, you know? I, I know that he got the things that he needed during these four months. Or three months, three, three plus months. But it doesn't make the process e any easier. I've never met a foster parent that's, that said, it's easy to give up a child. So just, if you're a prayer, please pray for baby S, pray for me. If you're not a prayer to a God, if you're just someone who believes in the universe or energy, I don't really care. Whatever you turn to, please turn to that and just send good energy and vibes. Because we want to make sure that this boy always feels loved. No matter where he's at, I just want him to always feel loved. I don't ever want him to feel like he's different or off or not loved. So I think this will be the last video with him for now, maybe. You never know what, what God can do and what 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 will happen. Um, <laughs> you want to stand up and play, don't you? He's been sleeping all day. Like I said, we've both been sleeping all day. Anyway, thank you guys for the support. This has been a crazy two weeks, two babies headed out and I will you know I will I'll take in another tonight if they call me but I'll always have a bed here for him I will never have more than one baby in my home until I am sure that he's not coming back for any weird turn of events it's happened to other foster parents so I always will make sure that he's got a room here Thanks. Say bye, buddy. Bye, guys. Bye for now. We love you. We love you guys. Thanks. Peace out.